What is up guys, Andy Forrest of Dean Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today I wanna to dive in and share with you three of my favorite speed day shoes of 2023. I'm gonna throw in two bonus shoes as well. One from last year that I've been using this year a lot and one racing shoe that I've been using for a lot of speed day shoes. And what do I mean by speed day shoes? Shoes that I'm taking out on dedicated interval workout days, fart leg runs, that sort of stuff, tempo runs uh, that I've just been using purely for that type of running. And I wanna share with you how I found them, where their sweet spot is and which one at the moment seems to be my favorite of 2023. So if you're excited for today's video guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. Let's start with the bonus two first. So we'll start with the Takumi Sen 9. Very quickly, a couple of apologies that I forgot to mention in the intro. Number one, I'm a bit sick, so apologies, my voice is not great today. And number two, apologies for the echo. I'm in a temporary recording space at the moment whilst I paint my room and get it ready for hopefully in the next week or two. Just need to order the lights and I'll be in a new space with much better sound quality. So bear with me on that one. You'll have to sit through the echo today. But I wanted to share this one. You guys know the love I have for this shoe. Absolutely incredible. Been using it loads this year. And I found this sweet spot on this shoe to be that top end interval workout. So I wouldn't really consider taking this for longer stuff. Realistically, nothing really over sort of like five, six, seven minute intervals. I have done some 10, 15 minute tempo intervals in them and then cut down to shorter stuff. That's fine. But if I'm doing longer long run workouts, for example, or lots of longer marathon pace chunks of work, it's not the shoe I go for. This really does home in on that top end. I really enjoy it. It's so lightweight, it's so comfortable. The only problem I've had with this shoe, and you, some of you guys will know this already, is I I found my ankles collapsing in too early in this shoe, 125 miles, and I've just had to put a halt on using it for the moment. Really disappointed because I found myself to use it so, so much and loved it. But at the moment, it's giving me ankle pain every time I use it, which goes up the side of my leg and creates tightness. So just had to put the brakes on it for the moment, but I wanted to throw this one into the mix to show you that this has been one of my favorites. And the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 2 is the other bonus one that I quickly want to share. Obviously, this is a racing shoe, but I found it to be so good for that speed work. We'll talk to the blue one because uh, it works on this side of the camera. So for me, I've loved this shoe. It's not competed, sadly, with the other racing shoes that I've tried. And it's been one of those shoes that I've kind of slipped on when I was testing. I was like, damn, this is really, really good. Really fast. Doesn't quite have that big sort of stack cushion feel that you get from a lot of racing shoes these days that are going to save the legs and help you with that cushion and everything. But it is much more of a low, what feels like a low profile racing shoe, a lot snappier. Uh, not necessarily poppy, but you just snap through uh, the gait cycle. It's wonderful. I feel like I get good propulsion from it. And I feel like there's enough cushioning in here that does make my legs feel really good. The only issue I have with this shoe is if I use it too much, I have found my calves ache quite a bit, especially after some of the longer sessions I've done in it. My calves have ached for one or two days afterwards, but that's not stopped me from using this shoe. It's not caused any injuries. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that. But in terms of how I use it and where I find its sweet spot, this is kind of that medium. So, so like we talked with the Takumi real top, end interval stuff I can find this good for where it's shone for me is those over and under workouts if I'm doing like uh, three minutes at tempo three minute moderate and just kind of doing that times 10 for an hour uh, that type of let's say 10k effort down to like marathon pace in that range so not necessarily top end it can do it I choose the Takumi over this but anything in the middle this thing is really really good and I know Puma have some good discounts they always throw out good discounts at various points in the year I'm very confident this thing will drop uh, price at some point might even be now who knows i'm sure coming up to christmas there'll be some good sales and i highly recommend that if this thing pops up on discount the dv8 nitro elite 2 racing shoe it's worth grabbing just for those workouts it is really really good so on to the three 2023 shoes let's start with the hoka mac x i have been loving this shoe and i want to include it in here despite the fact that i'm using it probably a little bit more for sort of moderate and longer miles. I have used it a sprinkling of speed, done some strides in it, pushed it up to marathon pace, and it really does do well in and around that area. Now, when we're talking about speed, I'm ranging here from those top end interval workouts all the way down to sort of like marathon pace, um, but nothing really that slower. And this would cover that bottom end of the spectrum. I'm not talking, and I wouldn't want to push the pace too much in this one. It's just not gonna be uh, that responsive. But what it does do is it gives you cushion and pop in abundance and although as i said it's a hoka so it tends to be like a wider base a bigger shoe feel on foot not quite as streamlined like the one we're about to talk about um, it does give you that great comfort and right and i seem to be gravitating towards this a lot at the moment i believe i've 
I think, I might be wrong here, but I think I've got well over 50 miles in this shoe already and it's creeping up to 100 quickly. In fact, it might be one of the shoes that gets to 100 first out of all the shoes I've been testing at the moment. And that shows just how much I'm enjoying it. Some long runs in this shoe, you can see how plastered in mud it is at the moment. It really has been taking a beating. But as I said, aside from the moderate and longer runs at that moderate effort, where this thing really shines. Uh, that marathon pace, I did take it up to, although I said at the time I didn't want to take it any further than marathon pace and I didn't really want to be in the shoe for that much longer, I have found 90 minutes in the shoe to be really good, really enjoyable. And when I did get to marathon effort, it was really good. This Profly midsole that they've added here, uh, this Piba base midsole that they use in the Rocket X2 has absolutely transformed uh, this shoe, Hoka shoes in general, if they use more of this next year, oh, that will be a revelation. And yeah, I'm loving it in this one. So yeah, Massive step forward for Hoka here. Bottom end of the speed day range, but definitely one to consider and potentially partner with a shorter, faster distance day shoe. And another 2023 release, the On Cloud Flow 4. This one has really caught me by surprise. When we're talking about more of a slimline fit compared to the Hoka, this is exactly what I'm on about. This is much more streamlined, not necessarily narrow, but we've not got kind of that midsole that bulges out the side for extra stability and stuff. This very much has been geared up for speed days. Now, in all honesty, it is on the slightly heavier end of the spectrum. Uh, for me in my UK size 13, 322 grams. For perspective something like the Sorkley and Dolphin Speed 3 298 grams and I think the Brooks Hyperion Max one of my favorites 287 grams um, so yeah to be honest with you it is slightly heavier but I've used it on a fair few workouts now already three I think or four and I've taken it on a two hour long run again this is a shoe that's up and over 50 miles and it's really impressing me another one that I'm gravitating towards and I think that's a sign of a good shoe when you look at your shoe rotation I do feel extremely lucky I have a lot to choose from at the moment with all the testing and if I go do you know what that's the one I want today then that is a sign of a good shoe silently clocking up the miles making me want to choose that shoe this is one of those it's not necessarily top end again I'll leave that to the next shoe we're about to talk about and the Takumi Sen 8 but mid-range, this is your man. This is the one that I'm going for. Anything from sort of like, not necessarily 10K, but let's say half marathon effort down to marathon. In that range, one hour race pace, even tempo effort. This thing does the job and it does it really, really well. I can categorically say that as I get in a little bit older, I'm 36, turning 37 next year, I'm finding that I do prefer firmer shoes for workouts. This isn't necessarily firm, but I do find that I prefer it over the super soft, squishy shoes. I find it gives me a little bit more stability. I feel a bit more comfortable when I'm running in them. And often with softer shoes, I can find, especially the Endorphin Speed 3 is a good example. I can feel like after a certain amount of time, the shoe goes a bit mushy. I don't get a lot back from it. I never find that in a firmer shoe. And this is just another good example from it. So a two hour long run banked on hilly terrain, moderate effort three or four workouts in this thing, ranging from marathon up to 10K effort, and it's ticked all the boxes for me so far. And the last one I want to share with you is the Saucony Kinvara 14. Last, but definitely best of the bunch for me. What a curveball this has been, from me hating the version 11 to me loving the version 14. Let me tell you why. I did a moderate run in this shoe, did the first impressions video, and I said in the first impressions, I'm not sure how good this thing is gonna be when it comes to speed work. It was amazing on the moderate run, but I just kind of had this gut feeling that it wasn't gonna be that good. Well, my gut was wrong, let me tell you that. The next day, I took it out for a fart leg session on the trails, 15 by one minute on, one minute off, and this logged me well. I mean, it's obviously not all the shoe, but the pleasure of running this thing was insane. And I ran the fastest fart leg workout on undulating trails out in the forest that I have ever run. So I knew fitness was in a good place anyway, but the shoe was great. And I thought, oh, is it a one-off? Am I just feeling good? Who knows? Last week, I took it out for another workout, exactly the same again. This time on the concrete, but that's fine. Absolutely blew me away. Let me tell you why, and this is why I love the Nike Street Fly, and the Adidas Takumi Sen, and now this. Lightweight, featherweight shoes. This one, again, lighter than the Vaporfly 3, the Saucony Dolphin Elite, most of my racing shoes. This is lighter than that. So I feel with lighter shoes without a plate, I get to work on my own form a bit more. The shoe's not necessarily aiding me, but it feels like there's barely anything on foot. There's enough here to give you that propulsion and pop that you need, but it is on the firmer end of the spectrum. So it's not soft and mushy, 
It's definitely on that firmer side. It is the basic power on foam, but I feel like there's a lighter compound. And just when I'm squeezing it like this, and I compare that to the Ride 16, the Ride 16 Power Run midsole is so much more dense. This feels like there's more like air in it, feels like lighter. Um, and with the rocker geometry in it, you do roll through so nicely. And for me, that's a winner. I do prefer firmer shoes when it comes to workouts and long runs. I just feel like I'm a bit more stable in the shoe. And I'm hoping the fact that it doesn't have that um, cut out uh, on the inside like the Takumi Sen that this will last me a long time and it won't roll my ankle in like the Takumi and to be honest bold statement already 37 38 miles in the shoe so far but I've been blown away that much that if this thing lasts over 125 miles and I'm still able to log incredible workouts in it then hands down this is probably speed day shoe of the year so just throwing that out there this has been an absolute gem in terms of pairing you could pair the Mac X with this or the Mac X with the On Cloud Flow 4 uh, because the Mac X covers the bottom end of the speed range and then those other two shoes cover the top end. You wouldn't want to couple this with the Cloud Flow 4, they're just too similar. Although this would take the top, top end stuff, I feel like they overlap too much. So the Mac X would pair with these two really nicely. Um, but yeah, I've got to say, like, I've seen people grab these for under £100 at the moment on discount. If you get a chance to do that, absolutely don't hesitate. So there we go, those are my speed day shoes of the year so far. Obviously more testing to come. We know we've got the Nova Blast 4 being released on December the 1st. I know that's not a speed day shoe, but there will be more shoes coming in for testing. So we'll see if anything comes in last minute that can break this down. However, so far, those are the three that I've personally been really, really impressed with. And of course, I'd love to throw it back to you. What's your favorite speed day shoe been this year? What's the shoe that you've gravitated to for interval work? For me, I'll tell you what's been a real surprise. Obviously, I've given you the three lists there, um, but the Puma, the Puma racing shoes, like they really were just like the Kimvara curveball for me. I have love, love, love running in them and they do cover some good longer workouts. They're going to get a lot of use I think during marathon training as my workouts kind of start to extend. That's a shoe that I'm definitely going to gravitate towards alongside the Hyperion Max. So when I want a plated shoe I might go for those and when I want a non-plated shoe probably the Hyperion Max. So those are my curveballs, the Convara and the Puma. What are yours and what have you been using? Do drop a comment below. It'd be great to hear from you down there. And yeah, share your stories of your speed day shoes in 2023. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And I'll see you on the next one. Until then.